What is going on, friends? Sean Don coming back with a technical analysis this fine Wednesday morning. Here we have Joseph Joe. I'm not. I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name. I don't want to butcher it. But um, yeah. So before we get into today's video, if you are interested in your own technical analysis video, or you're interested in some online coaching, or anything else that you might need to achieve your indoor or outdoor competition goals this season go to my website gripperrip.co and go sign up all right get to work with your boy uh i love it because i get to help you guys out give back to the sport help you guys achieve your goals and all that stuff and you guys get to reap the rewards of throwing farther learning more about technique and just becoming a better athlete overall so yeah gripperrip.co go check it out all right so joseph joe whatever you go by uh let's take a look at your video uh i replied to you the instagram because this has been a little delayed with my new work schedule but yeah. i gave you some tips Again. just based on how it looked which is pretty much what we're going to be talking about during this video so you'll probably get more of the same thing but now you get a little bit more uh, visual representation of what i'm talking about yeah. uh during the throw so let's get to it let's break it down so um you start square at the back of the ring which is fine uh, one thing that I see a lot of people do is with the weights, since it's so short, um, you can do this thing where you kind of, you know, bend at the waist, bend at the hips. Not a big deal, but um, yeah, because you do you do fix it here. So you, your, uh, your posture is better here. Just be wary of the weight pulling you down and forwards and getting too forward onto the toes. Um, you want to make sure you kind of keep your weight uh, balanced, I guess, front to back, left to right, all that stuff. Um, so with the weight being heavier and shorter, most people find themselves getting pitched forwards and breaking at the waist, breaking at the hips and the chest comes down. But, um, as you can see, you're starting here, uh, postured up a little stiff in the legs. Honestly, I'd say bend your knees a little bit. You know, you want to think athletic position, kind of like quarter squat or like if you were to do a vertical jump, you know, where would you bend your knees to if you were to do a vertical jump, vertical jump. So bend those knees a little bit, um, might help. You want to think about the legs as kind of like a the suspension of the throw, as I've already described. Uh, straight legs, stiff suspension. If you're driving a car, it means a bumpy ride. Uh, too soft in the legs, also bumpy ride. Uh, so you want to have adequate suspension. You want some tension, but not too much tension and not too little tension. So Goldilocks zone, as most things are in the throw. But as you bring the ball back... Um, you can see when you do swing the ball up, it's straight forwards. And then when you swing the ball backwards, it's straight backwards, like right through this left side. I'd say maybe try to get a little bit more rotation in this, or rather just think about bringing the ball, ball wider to your right side out here. Because as you can see, when it comes straight back, it's just straight pendulum motion. So ball drops down, ball goes up. You get a little rotation back there. And then you can see more or less the ball just comes straight back down to this uh, right leg here. Um, ball drops a lot. You can see balls kind of down like your knees. And then from there, so you have a lot of like up and down movement and front to back movement, but not rotational movement. So uh, it's going to be hard to kind of change the momentum of everything that's going on already at this point. Uh, as you can see, you bring the ball forwards and then you are able to start using Maybe it's your right hand, maybe it's your left hand, whatever it is, to start bringing the ball around. But I, like I said, I think if you just had a little bit more rotation in this swing before, preliminary swing, it might help smooth things out a little bit, flatten out the orbit a little bit. Because like I said, if there's no rotational energy, there's no centripetal force, the ball's going to drop on you, which is what's uh, happening here. So, um, But yeah, as you go through the wind, you can see your head's looking to the right, which is the right idea, as I already kind of said via Instagram. Head's looking to the right, but then we need to look at the shoulders. Um, they're facing, excuse me, uh, 270 here. And then as you go through your wind, you can see your shoulders come to zero. Like outside of your head looking to the right, your body is all oriented, orientated towards zero. Um, you are getting the ball out in front of you, but you can see your shoulders even kind of opening up a little bit more past zero. Maybe it's hard to tell with this camera angle. But um, still, shoulders at zero, and then as you open up, shoulders stay at zero, your head's looking to the right, kind of an awkward looking movement if you ask me. Um, and then 
you can see this left arm kind of come very up over the head kind of extending that left elbow up and you can see as soon as that starts to happen your head comes back towards zero and you're looking up a little bit you get a little forward on the toes um, you're countering the ball but then you see it's just kind of hard for you to open up the shoulders with your hips and everything kind of facing zero uh, you are trying to do so but with this left elbow left arm coming so high it's really hard to get extension and open up and reach backing or reaching back towards 180 sorry it's a little early this morning my brain's still waking up <coughs> but uh yeah, with this left elbow, left arm coming up so high, it's hard to open up and extend because the rotational energy, like I said, just isn't there. It's just kind of going up. You can see the ball is very steep on you in this wind above the hands. Uh, and then it's just kind of hard for you to open up and connect with the ball early because you can see this left arm coming across the body. You're trying to open up the shoulders, but you can see you're still more or less facing zero. And then this right elbow kind of comes down on you, pulling down on it here. And you can see the ball dropping. And then you're using your right leg to stabilize your left side pretty well, it looks like. But with the ball dropping so much, there's just no tension on the ball. Um, and you can see it's just kind of, you're sinking down with it here. So you can see, if you look at your chest height, sinking down with the ball, sinking down with the ball. So the uh, thing I say a lot is that you want to counter the ball, not in the sense of, you know, actively pulling or pushing or whatever against it. But if the ball is dropping and you're dropping with it, that means you're going to lose tension on the ball. So if the ball is dropping here, you want to, at the very least, hold your uh, center of mass. You want to hold your, your stability in the body. You don't want to drop down with it, and you don't want to. You also don't want to rise up with it. Uh, you want to do the opposite. So if the ball is dropping, you need to hold or kind of uh, put some force into the ground to prevent yourself from getting pulled down, I'm kind of thinking about standing up in a way. And then vice versa, as the ball's rising, you need to kind of think about dropping or holding your same sort of, uh, I like to say, like hip height, for example. Um, but, yeah, so there's just really not much centripetal force um, rotationally uh, in the wind and the entry. So one thing I might recommend for you and I do for a lot of people is a sling start or a bump start or something like that. It might make things a little bit easier, flatten out the orbit, get a little bit more of that rotational aspect in the throw for you, get you a little bit more centripetal force. So... Um, but as you go through entry, like I said, just not a ton of tension here. You're pretty stable through entry. There's a little bit of shifting back here, pulling back, left side opening, rotating um, before the ball gets to zero. But that's not the big issue. Like I said, the big issue is that the ball is dropping and you're dropping with it. Uh, and there's just not much rotational energy. And then from there, it looks like you don't really connect with the hammer until right about maybe here. You can see the arms finally start to get out away from the body. But by that point, you can see this left side really shifting back, pulling back. And that's kind of coming from this heel start here. Um, as you can see, knee back behind the heel. You want to get this knee out over, like, let's say your toe a little bit more, which really just comes from ankle mobility. Not a lot of people have that. But the more stability you have in the ball or more tension you have from the ball, uh, more connection. The easier it is to feel this right side working to stabilize this left side to let the ball pass and get long left because right now like i said you're just really shortening the ball around the left and you can see there's a little bit of uh pulling back and then lifting here you can see you lift up through the hands through the arms like i said same sort of thing that goes uh in conjunction with the entry if you drop with the ball you're going to rise with the ball usually it's hard to kind of break out of that pattern so you just got to set it up better uh and you can see you lift the hand balls going up lift the hands shoulders rising up a little bit um pretty good posture in single support but by this point with this very strong left side pulling back and just it's i don't even think it's the left side pulling back actively i think it's just a reaction so if you don't set it up well the left side is going to pull back and then you can see the orbit gets shorter on the left which you can't see because of the ball but if you look at the body you are shifting back a good bit and then what happens is you can see right there it's that that's pulling the ball left towards so it looks like your direction is more down this left sector and then when you go to catch your body's like oh shit we don't feel stable what happens the body doesn't the body wants to feel stability uh so it will do what it needs to do if i push you forward and you're walking and you're going to trip you're going to catch yourself by putting your foot out further than normal and that's exactly what happens here so your body's not very stable it doesn't feel stability it doesn't feel safe so you put this right leg really wide and you can see this right knee kind of back 
out here. Ideally, your left leg looks all right, um, but your right leg, right foot specifically, would be more underneath you. You'd have a little bit more shin angle here, uh, where you have kind of a negative shin, shin angle, where you can see a very positive shin angle here. So you kind of want more of a shin angle. You want that right foot more underneath you. <laughs> but like I said, this is a reaction um, to just catching yourself, and you're trying to find stability. So you get really wide in this first catch. Uh, in terms of where the ball's at, not a bad position. Just this lower body thing's really funky, so then we'll see what happens from here. You do end up over-rotating a little bit as well if you look at right foot to left foot. Um, and you can see you're going to be very heavy on the right. You're going to see most of your weight shift over to this right leg. Like I said, your body wants to feel stability and balance, so now you see you kind of correct yourself, and your body shifts to in between your feet. But then with that, like I said, just not very stable. Um, and when you catch with this sort of position, it's hard to get this right leg to work and turn with the ball. And then what happens is you can see this position right here coming through. Double support, that left side's pulling back. You don't really have much tension, direction, connection on the ball. You're just kind of doing what you can to get the ball through double support. And like you can see, as you catch, the ball drops a lot again. Uh, you don't give to it as much here. As you can see, you're finding some stability. So you're kind of, like I said, that hip height's more consistent. But it just looks like the ball's really steep on you here. Uh, so like I said, big proponent of the sling start. I think you should give that a try. And then as the ball goes through double support, you see that left side pulling up and back again. And you see this left side kind of leading and then right leg really not connected at all. Like it does its part in keeping you stable here, but it doesn't really turn with the ball. It's not really working the ball. It's very passive. Uh, right side activity here. Uh, ball goes around the left, already kind of short. As you can see, we couldn't see the ball in the previous turn because of the camera frame. But then if we see in this next turn, we do see the ball. And it's about, you know, six, inch six inches shorter around the left just from camera frame. So it's hard to tell exactly. But ball's getting shorter around the left. Right side's a little bit behind. As you go through doubles or single support, your right side does catch up pretty well. So like this is a pretty solid right leg single support movement. It's just you're kind of missing direction and this left knee is a little maybe a little stiff. Uh, you could maybe think about walking through the circle. So like using that left hamstring to pull yourself forwards through the circle, dropping that left knee forwards towards 180, all different cues that might help get you a little bit more direction forwards into the circle. But like I said, most of this is just a reaction of what's going on earlier in the throw. So, um, And then with that kind of lack of direction, you can see the ball going towards the sector. You see that right knee going towards it, but this left knee is really stiff. Like I said, there's really no direction, horizontal translation forwards towards the circle, uh, at least in terms of that left knee. And forwards towards the sector, sorry, in terms of that left knee. You go to catch, and then you put this right foot down. And now it's the same sort of thing. Um, when you do catch, it's deeper into the sector, but you're kind of like so far back against the ball. Your hips are kind of underneath you. Left leg's all right, but same thing in the right leg. Your shin angle is kind of negative. It's kind of reverse of kind of what it should be. It should be kind of on the ball of the foot instead of landing really hard on the heel. Uh, I do find that landing on the heel is good for stability. It's like I said, it's a very natural thing. The heel, when you're walking, uh, does give a signal of stability towards the brain, to the brain. So landing with that heel is like your body kind of catching itself. Um, but it's also not very conducive to a very athletic thing. Imagine if you were going to do a vertical jump, but your you know, heels were stuck to the ground. You know, you wouldn't get that triple extension. It'd be a really weak vertical jump. So um, got to get on that ball, that foot, get that foot underneath you a little bit more. Uh, and then just not a ton of tension here. So the, the thing that's going on early in the throw, an object in motion stays in motion. So like whatever's going wrong earlier in the throw is going to continue to kind of go wrong later in the throw. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. Um, as you go through double support, you're starting to turn with it a little bit more. So you're kind of correcting. Your hips are underneath you. You're still getting pulled forward a little bit because the ball is pretty low, pretty steep. And then you don't quite finish the turn because this right side really isn't turning. You can see that right knee kind of turning, but this right foot's kind of broken. It's disconnected. The right ankle's kind of disconnected from everything. And then you pick up that right foot pretty early here. Our foot picks up probably about 45 after zero. You never really finish the ball. You never really get the ball through 90. Um, and then you kind of pick up that right foot pretty early. Same sort of thing here, though. Left leg. Right leg's pretty good, but left knee, as you can see, it doesn't really bend until there or so. 
So you got to get that left knee bending forwards towards the sector a little bit more. And then you see the high point of this throw. And you can even see the ball come across. It's low around the left. And then it's high towards the left sector. So your direct direction is just a little bit off as well. And then same sort of thing as we saw in the previous turns. Wide right leg, he landing with that heel, negative shin angle. Um, and then <clears throat> as you come through double support, same sort of thing. Not a lot of tension coming from the right side. It's mostly left side pulling. As you can see, boom, really back heavy on this right leg. And you can see, like I said, this is this is the epitome of what I'm talking about, where your left leg, left side's doing all the work. Your right side is really just playing a passive role. It's not really working the ball too well. As you see all of this action in the finish coming from this left leg, you see this right leg pretty much not moving left foot or sorry right foot not moving at all in the finish until you already release so that right foot isn't really not turning working up into the ball but still a decent finish you're getting the ball out into the sector which is good but it's just a really left-sided finish so um and then you can see the natural tendency when you're really heavy on the right when you're pulling that left side back because you're heavy on the right vice versa you're going to see this left foot kind of come over to the left side and you see your body shift over to the left side of the circle or where your right side was. Jeez, dude. Oh, morning supplements not sitting right in the stomach right now. Okay, sorry. Um, but yeah, stoked. I think you said it's like a 17 meter throw. So you got a lot of potential uh, based on everything that we've seen in here. I'm going to take a sip of water. All right, that feels way better. Okay, so yeah, like I said, if we run it through really quick from the start, <clears throat> we need to make this entry and set up better. Like I said, try a sling start. It's kind of late in indoor season, so maybe not the best time to do it, but if you are going to wind the ball, try to make it a little flatter. Like I said, start with it a little wider, a little bit more rotational of a wind start rather than a very linear wind start that you got going on here. Um, and then from there, we got to reach out more to the right side. You got to open up your shoulders more to the right, reach out, push, sling, whatever you want to call uh, the movement, but across, around, and entries of forwards from 270 uh out through zero and then out around the left and you got to stabilize the body because like i said it's this right here that just kills you this is this movement right there and then everything else from that is just a reaction and then uh yeah maybe work on like i said your center of mass a little bit get your right leg a little bit more underneath you but all of it just comes back to the entry so yeah thank you for watching this is i think the longest technical analysis i've done on record in quite a while so morning rambling it's going crazy all right so let me know if you have any questions joseph uh yes and anybody else out there if you're interested in a technical analysis if you've watched 18 minutes of this video so far you should probably go check out my website cryptorip.co and sign up for some online coaching all right i love you guys until next time sean don signing off